Hi, my name is Jamie Sanchez. This is my presentation for TESP 350 Assessment and Special Education. The topic I'm going to present is about considerations for ELL evaluation. The first thing that I wanted to discuss is uh, the understanding, how to understand dialects and differences in language. Part of understanding um, dialects and um, the different parts of language in, in individuals is that first you need to know what a dialect is. And dialect is the variation that occurs within the language. So I might pronunciate uh, something like pecan and somebody else says pecan. And so one or the other isn't correct or incorrect. It's just a difference in dialect. Uh, the way that I say uh, certain words, my husband says totally different. And so it's just a difference in dialect because I am from the middle, um, the Midwest here in Kansas and my husband is from the East Coast in Connecticut. So understanding the different dialects and how language and words might be spoken differently in different uh, parts of the country, in different cultures, in different neighborhoods even, uh, depending on what your um, family dynamic is, can have a huge impact on the dialect that is spoken. Some of the things that um, that might influence uh, dialect, uh, I just I just briefly discussed, which would be culture, the geographic region that that people are from. So, like the example I've given about my husband and I, we're from different parts of the country, so we have a different dialect. We have different accent. We say words slightly differently. Uh, or we might use different words for the same thing. Um, the, the way that these differences um, impact um, students and, and when educators are assessing them is that you have to keep in mind what that student's dialect and background is. I work with a student and I know that she comes from what I now know um, is uh, the use of black English. She says X and um, has a hard time with um, saying ending sounds in her words, which I had learned are uh, like those consonant blends at the end of words. She does not pronounce both parts. And so I had been struggling to work with her to get her to pronounce that ending sound, you know, um, dramatically reading the words like last to get her to enunciate that la that ending sound so that I knew that she could say it and she could read it. Uh, but I didn't realize, even though I knew it was a, a cultural you know, household uh, family dynamic that took, that had um, an impact on the way she spoke. I didn't, I didn't know that there was a difference in how to uh, assess a student that has some dialect differences. Uh, it's easier, to me, it was easier to tell if a student is an English learner because they have variations from their language to the English language that we teach under, but I didn't, I didn't know that there was a difference, or that it's considered, you know, similar when it's the a, a dialect issue as opposed to a language um, issue. So ways that um, that dialects vary is in the, the phonology, the morphology, the syntax, uh, semantics, and pragmatics, but the ones that are mostly affected, uh, the ones that vary the most, would be the morphology and the syntax, just the way that words are formed, the context in which they're used in. Uh, so, for instance, uh, the student I was speaking about, they say uh, things like, my brother be in trouble. My brother be in here, as opposed to my brother is. And so that is a common error, per se, a common difference 
I guess would be the more appropriate word for uh, the difference in dialect and knowing how those and where those differences appear is important when assessing a student so that you can approach it the right way. You can tailor or modify assessments to fit their dialect dynamic, whatever it may be, whether it's um, one form of English over standard English, whether it's black English to regular English, uh, whether it's Spanish English to regular English. Um, you have to know the differences so that you can effectively assess their oral language and and know the difference whether it's a an issue of dialect or if it's an issue of um, an educational issue. Uh, some options that would uh, be available for ELL students for intervention that I would consider would be uh, utilizing small groups and partner activities in the classroom. This would promote modeling of the English language, uh, well, standard English language. So if you put a student who is an English language learner into a group with other students who are proficient in the English language, they are going to hear the, the different tones and, and mannerisms in the dialect that is being spoken by their peers and they are more likely to imitate and model that and that helps with strengthening that skill and the ability to uh, change the the dialect in which they're speaking and give them more fluent English speaking abilities. I know several students that I see on a daily basis that are ELL students and they are very proficient in speaking English. They have almost little to no dialect differences that I notice, but it's in the the word choices that they use, the way they form their sentences where they have struggles. And so it's not always in what you hear in the the tone or the dialect in there. It's it's sometimes just the the way that sentences are formed because sentences are formed so differently from one language to another. And sometimes that's where students struggle. So hearing just casual conversation by their peers helps them to learn how to form sentences, which words to put where, where a verb should go and a noun should go because it's completely different from their native language. Another um, intervention option would be the use of bilingual education. So um, ELL aides having um, ESL teachers using um, any any of the the district's bilingual services with um, with staff are are definitely a beneficial intervention for students. Uh, another thing would be um, to evaluate their learning environment. If in their classroom the teacher is not incorporating things that would be uh, of interest to them to to engage in, if it's not a, a an environment that's friendly to the differences in their learning pattern, they're going to struggle. If you have a student that comes in that is not uh, well-versed in the English language, then just something as simple as demonstrating what you're doing as you're wanting things done uh, is it could make a huge difference. If you say, everyone get out your notebooks, and they don't know what a notebook is, they don't understand enough of the words in your sentence, they're not going to be able to do it. But if you reach in and you get out a notebook and you say, everyone get out your notebooks and you show it to them, that student is able to pick up on what you mean, what your intention is, and then they feel more comfortable and confident they're able to follow along, even if they don't have enough of the language to fluently communicate in the classroom. Another um, intervention that can be done is to offer assessments in their native language, in their more fluent language. You can give the option of both or combine the two, but having the option of giving the test in their primary language, giving the assessment, giving the assignment uh, is definitely something that gives them a little bit more of I wouldn't say an advantage because it doesn't give them an advantage over another student. It gives them the same level ground for 
um, performance as English speaking students. And then using interpreters, even if it's something where you can demonstrate, like I gave the example with the notebook, but they, um, they just need someone to explain instructions to them in their primary language, then, then give them that intervention, give them that option to have that interpreter in there as they learn the language, they can hear it in both their primary language and in English uh, instruction given by the teacher. So the last part that I wanted to discuss is why are um, students with language differences misidentified for services? And this is a big problem. At the beginning of my recording, I spoke about uh, a little girl that I work with. I didn't, I didn't know when assessing her how to differentiate between what is a dialect issue, um, just a difference in her, her learned speaking dialect and what might have been an educational delay or area of special education concern. I know that she gets special education services because that is where um, I work within the school because I do know she has some academic delay, but I don't, I didn't know how much of that delay is um, in her speech and reading is from dialect and how much of it is from academic. And so it's, it's a very common thing that people either assume that they're going to speak the same way as the majority of the students. And so if they don't pronounce that T at the end of past, then there's a deficit there. They're missing their T's. They don't know their T. Or they, on the other end of things, they may say, oh, well, they have a hard time with saying those consonant blends at the end. So she's going to miss the T every time. And then they completely overlook it. And maybe she doesn't know what that T sound is at the end of a word. So it it's very important that educators are aware of possible dialect um, issues, possible dialect different differences, should I say, and um, potential educational um, areas of concern, and closely monitor and, and assess the student in different ways to make sure that it's one or the other and not assume that it is one or the other, because it very well may be the opposite of what we think. Thank you.